Methought the ghosts of all that I had murdered came in my tent, and every one did threat tomorrow's vengeance on the head of Richard. Bosworth Field, 1485. The war of the roses rages in England. The bloody and unstable reign of Richard the Third has turned much of the English nobility against him. The young Earl of Richmond, Henry Tudor, grand nephew of the great Henry V, declares himself in France and asserts his claim to Britain's throne. Supported by Scotland and the petty French fiefdoms, he sails for England in 1485 with his sights on London and the crown. He lands in Wales and raises a loose collection of supporters. Hearing that Richard is marshalling his forces in Shrewsbury, Richmond hurriedly approaches him there. Richard, meanwhile, attempts to muster a defense against the invaders, but is hampered by the disloyalty of his generals. Only John Holland, Duke of Norfolk, and Henry Percy, Earl of Northumberland, arrive with armored and well-equipped divisions at their disposal. In an effort to gather more manpower, Richard blackmails the powerful Baron Thomas Stanley, Earl of Derby, by taking his son hostage. Richard hopes this rash decision will persuade Stanley to bring his army to support the king. Henry Tudor, Earl of Richmond, is young and uneasy at the head of a division, so he hands command of the French mercenary force to the veteran John de Vere, Earl of Oxford. Richmond himself takes charge of a small company of Scotsmen and Scandinavian exiles. The Welsh army is helmed by Rhys Thomas, a landholder loyal to the House of Tudor. As Richmond, Oxford, and Thomas enter Shrewsbury, Richard, Norfolk, and Northumberland align their forces atop a ridge overlooking the muddy Bosworth Field. Oxford plans to assault the king on the hill, as he does not expect Richard to attack. However, Richard is uneasy about the loyalty of Baron Stanley, whose large host of cavalry and Irish expeditionaries is watching from the top of a nearby hill. He sends Stanley a message declaring that his son would be decapitated if Stanley does not attack Richmond. Stanley replies, Sire, thou knowest I have other sons. Fearing that Stanley will betray them, Richard and Norfolk rush their armies down from the ridge and attack Richmond and Oxford on the swampy field, while Northumberland keeps his host ready in reserve. Watching from his perch atop the hill, Stanley waits for the opportune moment to intervene on Richmond's side and attack Richard from behind. The host of England is better equipped, more numerous, and boasts a fearsome cavalry wing, while Richmond's army, consisting largely of mercenaries and auxiliaries from all over Europe, is more experienced and has access to pikemen, elite Scots guard archers, and Frankish knights. To win the battle and put down the rebellion, Richard must outmaneuver the adept Oxford and attack the challenger Richmond while Northumberland prevents Stanley from routing the king from behind. For Richmond to defeat Richard and claim his right to the crown, he must allow Oxford, with the help of the Welshman, to use his experienced soldiers to hold back Richard's attack until Stanley can join the battle. If Richmond dies, his armies will be demoralized and will flee the field. If Oxford dies, Richmond will lose his tactical leadership and fall into chaotic disarray. But if any of his soldiers manage to slay Richard himself, the rest of the English will lay down their arms. Can Richmond end the War of the Roses in a victory for the House of Tudor? Will Richard III be the last Plantagenet King of England? Or can the ruthless King repel yet another attempt on his crown and send the invaders screaming into the ocean? Let's to it pell-mell, hand in hand to heaven or to hell.